Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on the three wrong ways to figure value trash prices. Um, so actually, if you go to our nationaltrashrelay.com website, we have a free download that is uh, like a revenue tool to kind of see, you know, how much you can charge for apartments. Um, and then you can kind of play around with it, see like what that multiplier would be over one, two, three, four or five apartments, right? Um, so it's a great tool to, to check out on our website. But I want to talk today about some of the wrong ways that you can um, essentially go about trying to figure out pricing, especially if you're, you know, just trying to uh, do everything on, on your own right now and, and figure out pricing and go out and try to get contracts and everything. So really up front, the first one um, is, can I get a price check on competitor number one, please? It, it's very, uh, you need to be in tune not only with your location, but with your competition as well. So not charging for your services correctly will put you out of business, right? If you go super low, uh, you're not going to be able to turn a profit. If you go too high, you're not going to get any contracts because competitors will always beat you out on price point. So competition is a sign of a healthy Valley trash environment. So if you're the only one in a market and you can set that market price, that is great. You know, go for it. Um, we always suggest starting a little bit high on the pricing and negotiating down. Um, if you kind of feel that they're, you know, hesitant about pricing at that point and within a sales meeting, um, your competitive edge, you know, will disappear without some competitors in the market, right? So if people turn you down or they just, you know, take you on as your service as is, that's once again, like, that's great. If they turn you down, just come back to them. Um, but if there's competition, it's always a way to get into an apartment complex quicker because at that point you don't have to do a lot of education about what the service is and how it can benefit them and the community and, you know, increase revenue for their company and everything like that. Um, so your primary goal is when you come across a, comp a competitor is to beat it, right? Beat the price point. Um, and so that just kind of comes back to asking leading questions about when their, you know, contract is up and what their, you know, rate that they're paying is and everything like that. Cause then that way you can say, I want to put in a competitive bid and, uh, really, you know, come in at a, a better price point and hopefully take the contract from there. Um, always have a pulse on what the competition is doing. So even if you're not necessarily calling in and, you know, checking everything all the time, uh, it's always great that if you come across a complex, like I said earlier, to just kind of ask, you know, even if you're happy with the service and you're not looking to change, do you mind if I ask what, you know, you're currently paying for your, you know, your rate and your fee and everything. And nine times out of 10, they'll give it to you just because it's information and it's no skin off their, you know, off their nose for, for the most part to just, you know, inform you. Um, but understand also that the quality of your service is better and you can consider your add-on services. So even in that conversation, when you're talking to someone that has a competitor, you can even ask, um, have you ever thought about additional services like bulk removal or, you know, trash out apartments or power washing or, you know, things like that, that could kind of tweak, you know, or I guess, you know, tweak your you know business offerings a little bit make you additional revenue, but at the same time, give them something additional that they want that their current provider doesn't do. Um, and overall, be honest with yourself about where you outperform and where uh, you can do better to charge the right fees, right? So once again, this is going to be a little bit upfront hit or miss as you start to have your sales meetings and sales cycles, you'll get a better feeling for how the complex is and looks and how luxurious it is. And where you can kind of start a price point if it is a brand new complex or one that doesn't have the service and there's more education um like i said everything is a negotiation right so even if you start higher at a price point um and then they kind of get cold feet about it you can always come down because you know you're talking to me i'm the owner uh we can you know really partner here and oh you have multiple properties well why don't we reduce the price but you give me the additional properties and doors to service you know there's always a, an avenue to uh, make both sides happy. You just have to find what those hot buttons and, and points are. Two, uh, great. Just one more monthly bill, right? So don't charge the residents individually. Um, this is a huge headache if you try to do this, right? If you got a 300 unit, if, if a property manager says, I'm not going to pay you, great if you have the service here, but you have to sell it individually to everyone at each door. There is no way for you to go individual each door and sell to each resident and get them to sign up and get a credit card processor and bill them monthly and have them pay monthly. And there's just too much, you know, to manage 300, you know, invoices coming in constantly, right? Even if it's on recurring monthly subscription uh, or payment. 
um, and not everyone's going to want it. So we're going to want to cancel it. So that's why it's always better to deal directly with the property management company because they are overseeing the entire property. And then that way you're just doing one invoice and getting one check or, you know, deposit later on. Um, include your service amount due in the monthly rent monthly rent price, you know, easiest for all parties involved, right? So um, in this case, since you're not charging individually residents, you know, this is where some of the implementation factor comes in, right? If it's a property that doesn't have the service and they have to implement, um, it kind of takes that relief while they transfer old um, contracts out and new contracts in and they're able to bill the resident for it, right? Because then it's on the property manager to bill the resident for you. Then this way, they're no matter what, collecting it because it's included in the rent and you're getting paid by one person, property manager. Um, once again, allow the property management company to handle the billing. This is you present to them, you invoice them, they do whatever they need to with the complex, whether they charge it back to them or don't charge it back to them. And then they just pay your invoice at the end of the month. It's not you, it's me. So not catering to the customer is the wrong approach, right? So your bread and butter is still the valet trash service because it's the, the largest money maker that you have um, and can help you rapidly grow your business. Um, but you really need to get to know the residents and the property managers before deciding how much you can kind of charge for additional services, right? So even if you get in with valet trash, you can say, hey, I noticed that there's a lot of bulk items that come around the first when people move out. We would love to take that on and, and be your bulk removal service provider. Um, or, hey, at the first of the month, you ever get apartments that just abandon, right? Because that'll happen sometimes. And instead of your maintenance crew taking care of it, we will actually trash out the apartment and take out the sofas and the tables and beds, whatever they left behind. We'll just take it straight to the dump for you, you know, and uh, um, we can filter all that price points in. So as you get to know them and you talk to them and you try to, you know, bring on more services, you'll definitely, you know, have those open lines of communication because you are there to help them and they want to be as, uh, have their maintenance staff not have to focus on things that are not maintenance or getting a unit turned over to, you know, be rented again, right? Because, you know, more people that are, that leave and the more days on the, the market, essentially that complex, not necessarily the complex, but the, the rental unit is, the more that they're losing money on that bottom line. Um, observe and make a list to decide how to charge, right? So once again, it's just observing the complex. What, you know, what are residents doing with their trash currently? Uh, is there a recycling program on site? Uh, is it a pet friendly community? If, you know, if it is and they don't have like dog waste removal areas, hey, we can install this for you and service them. Additional charge, right? Uh, does the complex seem short on maintenance? Um, that could be something where now you're going, hey, we can uh, add additional services like, um, straighten up the complex as we walk through. You know, I, you notice that your complex is large enough. You have two pools we can go through at night and just make sure all the chairs are straight and presentable for the morning, right? And now the maintenance staff doesn't have to waste, you know, an hour of their day going between and doing all that stuff. It's on you. Um, are there minor add-on services that would help residents and appeal to management? So once again, this is just stuff that you'll learn more as you actually have an agreement in place with someone and you're servicing because you will see the needs of the complex. So final takeaways, make your business about the customer. Pay attention to the competition and how you differ to charge properly. So it's okay to charge more or ask for more if you're offering additional services, right? Hey, that's great. Your current provider does this. You know what we do though? That's a little different. We do Valley Trash Service, but we also power wash. We throw power washing in once a quarter, you know, when we do the hallways and stuff like that, just in case there's any stains or drips or stuff that's not necessarily that we do, but you know, we still know that residents take their own trash out and, you know, bags rip and break and leak, right? Um, so we'll add that in, but your price point is just a little bit higher. So it's just that whole, you know, honing in on what the customer needs. Billing should be handled through the property management company and not individually for the units itself. Focus on the residents and complex operations to see if your services can benefit from them and be able to charge correctly. So really in all like i said you as you go into an apartment complex you'll understand more as you go through the sales cycle what's needed uh to get further in a, a contract agreement and then finally get in the contract agreement and then additional add-on services you can do so valet trash will still be your bread and butter and then you can throw on additional junk and bulk and uh, smaller items to 
beef up one apartment complex if you're trying to generate more revenue while using still you know one valet to help you accomplish that at, at reasonable price points so thanks for joining me on this video uh, if you liked what we had to say go ahead and uh, like and subscribe that would be super helpful um, and we'll see you next time bye